Hello, and welcome to Starside Flicks. We haven't done one of these in a while. I am yeah. your host, Zach Owens, and my co-host is Aaron Capo. Hello. How's it going? It's going well. Well, we have seen Avengers Endgame. It's been out for two weeks, is it, now? And you've seen it twice, which I'm very jealous of. I have seen it twice, but at this point... I feel like we can go ahead and just go right into spoilers, so... Yeah, I mean, officially, Marvel has ended the spoiler ban because today they released a very spoilery trailer for the next Spider-Man movie. Yeah, there was a little thing before it where Tom Holland was like, this has spoilers, but watch it if you've seen Endgame. So we're, we've seen it twice and it's been out for two, or I've seen it twice and it's been out for two weeks. So we figure we can go ahead and do a spoiler discussion. So Endgame is like the culmination of 10 years and 22 films. And not, crazy. not necessarily all of those movies are great, but most of them are. And they have done this really unlikely thing where they weaved them all together in this insane universe that all comes together in Endgame. So my question to you is, does it work? Does it provide a necessary sense of closure to the Infinity Saga and the characters involved? I feel like it definitely does. I don't know about you, but I came away very positively from this movie. I did as well, and that's why I went to see it twice, I guess. Maybe <laughs> maybe that's an indicator. But yeah, it was like an epic send-off for the first wave of heroes, like the initial six Avengers who were together for that first Avengers movie. Did you have to get up at all during the movie? No, no. Actually, both times I was fine. I was worried I was going to have to go to the bathroom or something, but uh, yeah, no, I was fine. Did you? No, but I really had to go to the bathroom towards the end of my only viewing, I guess. But I had heard that there was a special thing at, during like a post credit scene, but there wasn't a mid credit scene. So right when the credits started rolling, I ran to the bathroom and came back. What was that special thing? Just the sound of the hammer? That clang. Which, what was that officially? Do you, or is it just speculation? I think, I'm not sure if it is official or not, but the speculation I heard was that it's uh, Tony's hammer from the first. Yeah, that's what it sounds uh, like. Iron Man movie. That's what I assumed it was. It was just kind of a callback to when he was first forging the very first Iron Man suit, but. Well, we're starting at the end, though. Let's talk, let's talk about the beginning. It's true. We're getting well, like, way ahead of ourselves. They really. Uh, flipped the script because I, I mean, I was watching it and like the first like 20 minutes are what I thought the entire movie was yeah. going to be, which was a real, like it uh, took me off guard. Cause... It flies by super quick too. Like that first 20 minutes, uh, a lot kind of happens because I have to relocate Tony Stark and Nebula. And so... Yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel shows up and grabs the ship and brings it back to Earth. And there's just sort of flying through a lot of details there. And then it gets to them just like immediately going after Thanos. And you're like, wait, I thought this was like yeah. climax type material. But I guess it's uh, for the beginning. I was like, man, did I I almost was like, did they, did they forget a reel or something? Yeah. Like this is just rolling into what I assumed the end game was. Yeah, exactly. So... They get there and they go ahead and I guess it's too late. They He's already destroyed all the stones. And so you're like, uh-oh, well, what's going to happen? They've already destroyed the stones. There's no way to, to fix what was done. And so then Thor just goes ahead and kills Thanos. And you're like, man... Uh, I guess I guess that's it then. <laughs> but but yeah, then there's that like five years later, and that's when the movie yeah. starts like really sort of it slows down and starts settling in, and that's when it starts. I don't know if I would say it was daring to slow it down the way they did, or to like sort of give it that five year expansion to sort of let things sort of wallow in misery as the you know because of the the failure that they uh had but i think by spending that time and sort of showing us the world uh that way it makes the eventual success so much more satisfying i think so too and it led to one of my favorite scenes which was i think we've talked about this in the podcast but i love time travel mostly yeah. in rom-coms but uh, one of the one of my favorite scenes and something that like got me emotionally was when Paul Rudd comes back and like sees his daughter yeah. for the first time and he's like oh man you're so big that was a great scene because I love time travel uh, and it kind of like kicks off the whole 
time travel element, which I have to say I was not expecting there to be time travel in this movie. I think that was one of the big theories. So I was like ready for that to be one of the possible things that was going to happen. I tried to avoid spoiler stuff, but I did like see a few uh, in-game theories on YouTube just because there was approximately one million videos like that (laughs) posted on YouTube. But yeah, it basically does become Back to the Future 2. Except they have, I like that they lay out all the rules, uh... Do you think for their time travel? Do you think it stuck to those rules? Did it like do a good job of that? That's my question because I was thinking that, and then I listened to another podcast, and they were speculating about that too. Because obviously, at the end, Captain America goes away to like all the different times, and then he comes, and he's instantly on that bench, you know? Yeah. And that would be the only instance where they weren't abiding by their rules because you can't go into the past and change the present. But I read that the speculation was that he somehow came, he went to another splinter reality and lived out in that reality and then came back because I guess the shield he gives, uh, not Hawkeye. What's his name? It's another bird. Yeah. Um, the bird, the bird man, the wings wing what's his wing name? man what's it what? there shouldn't be a guy named hawkeye and another guy who has wings yeah Birdman. anyway apparently the shield he gives him is a different one than he left with or something like that so it's like well he didn't maybe have one to... when he left that's a good point so it's implied that maybe because it's a different looking shield another tony stark made it or it's from another reality so he just came back so he didn't necessarily stay in our reality and just live his life within like a uh, central earth reality he came back at the very end somehow mm, i mean that feels like a stretch but it also like it would work like that is a possibility so i i feel like even if you want to say well that's the one thing where they don't really abide by the rules that they've established well there's an explanation for it so if you want to read it that way that's like a thing you can do <laughs> Speaking of reading things certain ways, I didn't catch this the first time, and I was I don't remember what podcast I was listening to, but um, maybe you caught it since you watched it twice. Did it seem to you at the very end when they were sending Captain America away, he had like an exchange with Bucky? Yeah, and I think I know where you're going with this. Like, it seems like Bucky knows yeah, he's going for I good. definitely got that sense on the second viewing. I was like, the first time it didn't occur to me, but the second time I was yeah. definitely like, okay, this definitely feels like... Uh, Captain America and Bucky had a conversation and they both knew what was happening because Bucky definitely is like, I'm going to miss you. And (laughs) uh, later he's like, uh, he knows where he is and he's like, hey, uh, Birdman, go, (laughs) go talk to him. And then he's like shaking his head like, yeah, like we've planned this. You're the new Captain America. What is that guy's name? You know, he's going to be uh, Kovach in the second season of Altered Carbon. Yeah, if they hadn't ruined that show, I might watch it. Yeah, but I know. It's a real bummer. I mean, the actor seems like a cool guy, but I don't know. I, th- they ruined that show. Anyway. They did. It was not good. Yeah. Um. So what did you think about Captain Marvel not being in this movie very much? That was the other thing that I was like, oh, man, this completely subverted my expectations. Because it definitely because, seemed like she was going to be key to it, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, she's going to be the main thing. She's going to be the nuclear weapon they drop on Thanos, and it's going to be a crazy battle. And that kind of happens, but she's only in the movie for, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, collectively, it's probably close to 10 minutes. But, yeah, I, I mean... Anytime you have basically a Superman character and you have like one of these team up movies, they're easily the character that can just sort of they're the instant I win button and they can just fix everything. And so you Mm. almost have to come up with a way to sideline them so that, you know, you can have a movie. And that's one reason why I don't like Superman and Captain Marvel as characters, (laughs) but their explanation is basically well she's gonna go help out all these other planets and even if they're gonna change the past to to sort of undo what happened you'd think she would want to be involved in that because that's sort of gonna change the reality of everything else in the universe well it's crazy because the first time they contacted her they had that pager and then i guess that doesn't work anymore and she didn't give them another one because when she appears as a hologram and is talking to black widow she's like 
I gotta go take off and do some other stuff. And Black Widow's like, so we're not gonna see you for a while? She's like, yeah, I gotta go like out of communication range for months at a time. So you understand, I'll see you later. <laughs> like just give Earth another pager, you know? Yeah, I guess I didn't really explain that very well. Like how they are communicating back and forth because she does just kind of show up and it's not really stated as to. I assume like, she who shows up because her. everyone, like they fixed the snap or whatever, like all life came back. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, I gotta get back to Earth because something crazy is happening, I bet. Yeah. And I wonder, like, what kind of radar she has for enemy troop movements because Thanos is not a, a it's point. not a small ship <laughs> that's moving around it's a pretty <laughs> sizable spacecraft so that was a cool scene when it like flew out of the time machine and like expanded really quickly yeah i will say so i watched this movie in 3D because that was just the showing that we got did you watch it in 3D no i did not it did not add a lot but the thing that 3D is really good at is showing very small things in very large environments. So anytime there was a shot of like a spaceship hovering in space or that shot of uh, like anytime Thanos's uh, ship is just like hovering above the battlefield, it looked really cool. Also, that shot where it's just Captain America and he stands up against Thanos yeah. and the whole army and there's like kind of like a, a rift between them or like a, a space between them. That looked really awesome and like picturesque in 3D. But those are the only times I really, like, noticed it. I think they did shoot most, if not all of it, in, like, the IMAX. They did. It was the second movie ever to be shot entirely in IMAX. It looked amazing. And, like, those shots you're talking about where his ship is just sort of hovering uh, mm -hmm. up there, that did look awesome. And, like, those big battle sequences towards the end also were pretty amazing. And it's pretty helpful to be able to spot everything that's going on when you have the larger aspect ratio. So those create like there's so much going on in every frame in that final battle that lasted. I feel like I feel like it lasted forever. It was so cool. It was. It was a very cool sequence. And I feel like they gave almost everyone a little moment to do something like they mm -hmm. didn't get to do any, like a ton of stuff. They had to like they're really economizing the the time because they had so many characters to get to. But yeah. pretty much everybody gets to do something. They get to have some sort of moment. And that's one thing that the Avengers films have been very good at, especially when they have like the, the whole group together is sort of giving everyone a moment and not necessarily losing track of them all. Uh, were there, did you, so I assume you saw this in packed theaters both times, right? Yes. What were the standouts where everyone cheered? Because I can, there were two times in the movie where my entire audience cheered. I mean, and I wonder if they're the same. The biggest moment, without doubt, is when Captain America got Mjolnir. Yeah, that was great. Which was an awesome scene. That's something that happens in the comics, but if you didn't know... I had no idea. Yeah, if you didn't know that, then it would come as a complete surprise. And you might also be going like, wait, that doesn't make sense. But <laughs> they kind of do set it up uh, in previous films when they're like, uh, you know, is he worthy or whatever? And he kind of uh, nudges it a little bit. Uh, and yeah, and in Ultron, yeah, in Ultron. So, and then when he's uh, when Thor sees that he has it, he's like, I knew it, you know. I, I feel like the moment worked, even if you it was didn't great. necessarily have previous knowledge from the comics. So, any other standout moments where the, the crowd was loving it? Hmm, I'll say that in my theater, when that elevator scene happened and he said, Oh, yeah, Hydra, that got a big reaction from our crowd, yeah. That the first time i saw the movie that got a big laugh because it's obviously a callback to what is it the winter soldier where he's yeah. in the, the elevator and he fights all of those guys and this time he just says hail hydra and walks out and doesn't have to fight anybody <laughs> like there's so much of that stuff that's like callbacks to previous movies in the mcu that like they probably call back every movie every one of the 21 movies do you think so i i would bet so because there's like there's stuff from Thor The Dark World, yeah. which is, I think, one of the worst ones. It is. It, well, so they did a great job of making them all feel relevant to what's going on in this movie, which is another, mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know how they did it, but it's it's really cool that they were able to do that. Because, one, they had to actually go back into things we've seen from previous movies, but also, like, you just have little moments where... Uh, like, because Ant-Man hasn't been around for some of this stuff, so, like, Paul Rudd's character doesn't know 
uh, <laughs> what happened during Thor the Dark World. So he's like there asking. And so Thor is trying to explain <laughs> this stuff. And it's from a movie that like most people didn't like, but he's able yeah. to, I don't know, they're able to get like more meaning out of that than maybe there was previously. Because I thought the, the scenes with Thor going back into what would have been Thor the Dark World worked really well. And part of, I think so too. And part of that is because they give Thor a moment with his mom, just like they give uh, Tony Stark a moment with his dad, and Captain America has a moment to see his long lost love again. Uh, So those were like really satisfying character moments as well. And Mm -hmm. that's another reason why this feels like a, a send off to the original cast. But uh, but yeah, going back and seeing the first Avengers movie sort of from a different angle, almost like they they probably did have to shoot additional stuff like material from that movie. <laughs> yeah, because I can't imagine that they had planned this that far in advance that they yeah, actually no had way. that stuff ready to go. They're so good at aging and like de-aging people, though. Yeah. I mean, it looked great. I mean, it looked great, but like Michael Douglas, like you're saying, they de-aged him and it worked. And you just have like, it's kind of a reminder of how many big names and recognizable faces that they've had throughout the entire, uh, what, 22 films and across 10 years. And the closing credits, they like show them all off and you just kind of go, wow, that's... I almost forgot that some of these people were actually in it and they actually brought back Natalie Portman <laughs> to actually I read that that was unused footage from Dark World. Oh, was it really? I guess that, that's what I, I guess read. that makes sense. Yeah, because she was literally in it for five seconds. Yeah, they didn't. Really... She like woke up and walked slowly away off camera. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that, which is crazy. Like, why wouldn't you want to come do this? Is the biggest movie of all time. I don't know. I feel like she wanted out. And <laughs> they got Robert Redford for like five minutes. I know. And he was supposed to be retired. Like there was a movie last year called The Old Man and the Gun that was like his swan song movie that mm-hmm. where he's like officially done. That's the last one. And then he's like here for five minutes or whatever. So <laughs> I guess that's cool. And then at the also the very end where they're sending that Tony Stark like proof that Tony Stark has a heart or whatever they're sending that Mm -hmm. away and his sort of memorial and the camera just kind of slowly pans around and you see all the people that was a really one it was really moving scene but also it was just so cool to uh see all the people together although maybe they weren't together maybe it was just like a composite shot of like okay we've got Paul Rudd for this time we've got uh, Samuel L. Jackson for this time. And so they just had to like put it together somehow. But I don't know. I thought that was a cool moment. A lady in my theater was losing it during that scene. When they pushed off his little proof that Tony Stark has a heart, uh, she was like weeping in the back of the theater, which is crazy. <laughs> I was going to ask, did you notice a lot of people crying in your screening? The most audible one was that one. Uh, I heard a couple people like shifting in their seats when Paul Rudd came back to like hang out with his daughter. Um, I will say other the, emotional points. The time I noticed it, so Tony Stark does the snap to get rid of Thanos and all of his forces, and like Peter Parker is like weeping and coming over and and trying to say we did it, you know, and then Pepper comes over and. She, I think, repeats some line like she was talking to him because he didn't want to go. Right. Because he wanted to take care of his family, wanted to take care of Pepper and his daughter. But she knows him like better than anyone else. And she basically says, like, you're not going to be able to live with yourself if you just sit on this thing and don't participate. You're a hero. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. It's always in you. And so you kind of have to do it. And so you won't be able to rest if you don't do this. And so then he goes and does it. And of course, he snaps and sacrifices himself. And she comes over to him and is just like, you can rest now. And that was like sort of a tear. It was a tearjerker moment. And it goes almost silent after that. And I could definitely hear hear a lot of sniffling in my theater the first time I went to see the movie. They, that's almost three back to back moments because there's that moment where she's like, "You can rest," and he's kind of like fading away. 
Then you get the moment where he says his video will. Yeah. He says, I love you 3000, which is like a Yeah, which is a, a huge meme now. Like people on Twitter posting, I love you 3000. Like, <laughs> And then you get the funeral scene where they push his like little canoe away. So it's like nonstop emotional. Pu- and then you get the scene with um, Chef. What's that guy's name? Um happy oh yeah yeah uh, <laughs> for a second where, i was like chef oh no i, I got you <laughs> where uh he's talking to his daughter and she's like oh, i love cheeseburgers and he's like oh, which man, is yeah, yeah a call back to the first iron man movie when he yeah, gets back and he's like i just want a cheeseburger there's so many good callbacks yeah it's true you do like you really have to know all of the mcu movies especially that's what they did masterfully like they made it worth your while to yeah. watch all of these movies this is like sort of rewarding you for having stuck with them all these years and like knowing the movies really well uh that's why this feels like such a satisfying culmination of the 10 years and 22 movies so it's so cool how they did that and like i guess to an extent if you haven't kept up with them maybe you will be a little bit lost but it's like a long-running TV series at this point, but they're movies. Yeah. What did you think of the opening? We didn't talk about that with uh, Hawkeye and his family. I thought that was really well done. It definitely, it was important because one, like, I feel like there are a couple of movies at least that we didn't get that we probably should have gotten before this movie came out. And one of them would be uh, Hawkeye turning into Ronan and mm. going on his, like, like his killing spree or whatever we did get that cool one shot though we did that was a very cool shot but like later on in the scene where he and black widow are like fighting over who should die he's like you know i've done a lot of bad things i feel like that moment would have like been so much more powerful if we had had the context of where he'd been and what he'd done in between i feel like we're gonna get the context though you think we will get a, a like a Ronin movie? Well, no, but we're going to get uh, one of the Disney Plus shows is Hawkeye and his daughter and his daughter becoming Hawkeye. And 100 percent, he's going to have some flashbacks of all the terrible stuff he's gotten up to. Yeah, that could be. Well, and also I, we're there's going to be a Black Widow movie, right? Yeah. And so that'll give us content because we never really heard about her beginning. We had a little in Age of Ultron there. I think there were some flashbacks of. Yeah. Her origin, but we've never really gotten to the heart of when she was just like a cold blooded assassin. And honestly, I do think she's one of the most interesting characters uh, that they've had in the MCU so far. And a lot of it is how she was trained and all of that backstory. And it feels like kind of wrong that we didn't get a solo movie from her, just sort of a, a prequel yeah. before this happened. Because again, that would have made her sacrifice scene so much more powerful. Do you think she will come back? Because here's my theory. I mean, there's context for not... it. It could happen, I guess. Because, like, Captain America has to go back and give the Soul Stone back to the Red Skull. So maybe he'll be like, soul for a soul, give me back uh, Black Widow when I give you the stone. It's a fair trade. It has to be a trade. So maybe she'll come back in the present? I don't know. You know what would have been really cool is if hmm. they're like, okay, Captain America, go. And then they count down five seconds and they're like, okay, bring them back. And then if when they hit the button, if Black Widow showed up and Ooh, then that would have been great. And then uh, Captain America was sitting all old over on the bench over there. That would have been great. Yeah, I'm interested to see where this Black Widow movie takes. Like, if it is an origin or if it is in somehow in the new the new Avengers or whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure how they'll do that, but the other, well, the so other movie that we didn't get that we should have gotten was a Hulk movie where he becomes professor Hulk. That was a great. So to the two character, like comedic characters, I guess, actually, I guess there are three because Hulk is great. And then Thor is great. And every scene with Paul Rudd, I feel like he's still like even that scene where he's just sitting trying to eat a taco is a great scene. (laughs) Yeah, Paul Rudd's great. And I do think Thor has become a fan favorite ever since Ragnarok. And it is because they've sort of let him go full lean into his comedic abilities. Mm -hmm. And like he was I don't know. I felt it was kind of weird because they were doing like a visual gag that they just sort of had to keep running throughout the entire movie but i guess it it works because from his character perspective he is sort of he's depressed because 
he's dealing with the fact that he failed and so many people died. And it really is like you could pin it on other people as well. But like he had the shot to stop it and he failed. So it is really sort of weighing heavily on his mind. Uh, But I think he also does a good job of like while that sort of emotional weight is on him at all times, he also plays it off in a, a comedic way to make it so that that character doesn't feel totally unlike the character that we knew from Ragnarok, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it seems like, so the transition is now, do you think we'll get a Valkyrie movie or do you think she'll be part of, because I feel like what they have to do is they have to build up another core of Avengers. And so now that Thor is gone or he's going to be like off with the Guardians of the Galaxy, like Valkyrie kind of is in that spot. Does that make sense? Is that, you think that's true? Yeah. I mean, I can see that. I, one, I, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard that Chris Hemsworth extended his deal. Oh, really? I didn't hear that. Oh, so he he still wants to be Thor? I mean, I don't know for sure. Maybe I should check before I say definitively. I mean, why would you not want to be a Thor? I mean, it, it also, he doesn't need to, he's probably going to be in the next Guardians movie. Apparently there's precedent for, like, what do you think the odds are that the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie is called the Asgardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> I mean, he did make that joke. He made that joke, but they could act like they could. It could be Guardians of the Galaxy three subheading uh, as Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. I assume that movie is just going to be them trying to find uh, the green one. Man, we don't know a lot of these people's names. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I don't know. That may not be like official. But the rumor's been floated around, and for sure it seems like he's going to be there for Guardians 3. Yeah. Because that's the way that whole thing was going. Um, I would love it if they brought him back for, like, a Thor 4, because we need more Taika Waititi Marvel movies. That would be great. I mean, imagine also if it's uh, just, like, set on Earth, and it's a very small story. Yeah, I'm. so that's one question I was going to ask you. Where, like... After Thanos, what do they do? So we, at this point, as of this recording, we don't know what their phase four plans are. They're not well, announcing that until after the next Spider-Man movie comes out. I have speculation about that because they released that Spider-Man movie trailer, as we talked about. And in that, Samuel Jackson, whose character name I do know, and I, <laughs> Nick Fury. I'm not going to say. That's right, Nick Fury. Uh said, like, the snap, like, ripped a hole in the multiverse. So, and, like, now these, like, beings are coming into our reality. So it could be a multiverse type thing. It could also be Galactus, who is giant and just eats planets. And I don't even know how you would show that on screen. Like, how do you you fight something that's the size of, like, big enough to eat a planet? Yeah, I don't know. Um, (laughs) Well, and... They, I feel like... They have said that they are not going to introduce X-Men anytime soon. What about the Fantastic Four? That's a possibility. Um, Another, that's a definite possibility. The, the idea that it's now a multiverse opens the opportunity to bring back characters like Chris True. Evans or, or Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Captain America so that they, you know, just for one-off things, maybe even just like a cameo mm-hmm. or something, but... Um. Yeah, I don't know where where that's all going, but it's very interesting. the The reason I brought it up was because there's kind of a thing. I think the red letter media guys were talking about it in one of their videos. Uh, this concept of burnout, where if you go too big, uh, it almost uh, like when you try to reset or you go try to move on from there. There's this whole um cloud of you know, what's more dangerous than Thanos now? Like what's bigger than Thanos? Like you can't, you almost can't go to a smaller enemy because the threat's just not big enough anymore. You'd be like, well, okay. Yeah. But we dealt with Thanos. Like this is nothing. So this is a problem. I feel like that comes up in Dragon Ball Z a lot where the there's power creep Yeah, where like, Oh, we just defeated a god what's bigger what's, what's bigger than a god oh well this is like a god of gods or whatever yeah you have to like keep upping the power level 
Um, the, the other option, I guess, is you go ultra small just to like completely reset things. But I, I, I don't feel know, like they won't like do that now. The formula that works for them, and it's a good formula, is a lot of separate movies that set up individual characters culminating in the end of an arc, which is all of those characters getting together for a purpose. And that's why in the trailer for Spider-Man, it seems like Nick Fury and a, like a couple other people in the trailer are like, oh, are you going to like fill Iron Man's shoes or whatever? Are you the new Iron Man? So I feel like because Spider-Man is such a likable character, they're sort of putting him in this position to be the new Iron Man character for what I'm dubbing the new Avengers. Uh, kind of the heart and soul what, of the new team. Sort of, yeah. So I think there is going to be a new team. Maybe it's uh, Spider-Man, Valkyrie, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel. Birdman with Captain America shield. New, Yeah, new Birdman, Captain America. Um, I could, because here's something else that I'm very much anticipating. What is that post credit scene in Spider-Man Far From Home going to be? Because... It seems like it should start setting up whatever the next thing yeah, is. Yeah, the next phase, know? yeah. It'll because it'll have to. Famously yeah. at the end of Iron Man, it was the first appearance of uh Nick Fury being like, "Let's talk about the Avengers initiative." And it could very well be, and I bet like this is what I bet what could happen is everything's fine at the end of Spider-Man, all of a sudden Nick Fury shows up again. He's like, "I'm going to talk to you about the new Avengers initiative cut to black." Do you think they will call it New Avengers? They don't, they that won't to just me sounds like Avengers? a comic book thing. Like, you know how there's like the Amazing Spider-Man or like there's like a bunch of different variations of, I don't know if there's a, a precedent for it in the comics, but I feel like the New Avengers is a good tagline. Well, what they do in movies is they just go Spider-Man, the Spider-Man, uh, <laughs> Spider-Man adventure, I don't know. <laughs> They need like a core thing because they can't just keep saying Avengers five, six. Like, what if I feel like they need the a demarcation. Avengers. <laughs> Wasn't the first one the Avengers? Uh, it might have been. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they need a demarcation between because this is the end. You're right. This is the culmination of ten years. They're stepping out into a new, well, so a new everything. I don't know if they're going to be done with Guardians of the Galaxy after the third one. I don't know what the contract situation looks like with that mm-hmm. or what their plans are with those characters, but um, that could be the end of those characters. You've got Spider-Man for at least two more movies. You've got Black Panther for two more movies. You potentially have... Uh, there's going to be another Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, well, so there's only been one solo Doctor Strange movie. If if we're assuming that each of the characters gets their own trilogy and they appear in the team up movies, then he'll get two more. Um, then Captain Marvel will get two more, and they what was that character that they teased at the end of the first Guardians, or maybe it was the second Guardians of the Galaxy? Adam, Adam Warlock. Warlock. Yeah. Who I know nothing about except that maybe he's made of gold. Yeah, possibly. That's what it looked like. I I feel like he will factor into this next phase. Um, and we've heard nothing about him since that Guardians movie. So I feel mm-hmm. like he will pop up um, in the next phase at some point. There are other ones that I don't. There's there's a kung fu one that's oh, like going to yeah. be all Asian that I don't remember the name of that people are very excited about. Yeah, I remember seeing a headline about that at one point, but I don't I didn't read it, so I don't remember, but yeah, that's probably on the way as well. Yeah, maybe they do something with like Valkyrie or uh cuz there's going to be a TV series with Loki, right? Because that seemed like a setup in Endgame when they go back to the first Avengers movie basically and Loki gets away with the Tesseract Mm -hmm. Um, that is a setup for a TV show I feel like yeah 100% and we're going to have the Hawkeye TV show there's going to be a weird Scarlet Witch Vision TV show which I guess is set in the past because or in some alternate timeline yeah 
Yeah, I don't know. They could almost do like something really off the wall, like go into sort of a post-apocalyptic, really dark timeline with like mm. either existing characters or just a completely different character altogether. Like this sort of opens it's- the door for that thing that we talk about with like the Mass Effect series. Like, yeah, we want to see you know, the next big storyline, but also what if there was just like a Citadel detective series, you know, <laughs> like that would be great. Just like it, it kind of opens the door for different things. Now that there's sort of a multiverse, you could go in any number of directions with that. And that really opens up for villain options. Like you were talking about. I mean, maybe it's not a villain per se. Maybe it's that there is this rift in the multiverse and they have to like work to solve that. Or maybe there's some sort of, like overarching like figure that watches over the multiverse that is mad that they messed the multiverse up so he's going to try to correct stuff yeah and that could be a hero or a villain yeah i mean i'm not like super well versed in comics but all right here's a question will the x-men come via the multiverse or will it just be a natural thing that happens uh i don't know i feel like it'll just be a natural thing because wasn't quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch, technically X Men. That's a good point. Yeah, they never really got into their backstories of how they create, like how they got their powers. Well, I mean, at that time, I think they didn't have the rights to actually do that, so they sort of skirted the issue a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, maybe but, they I mean, could. They basi- that basically was mutations. Yeah, maybe they could now. Maybe they go into that a little bit. When at what point do you think we're going to see a Wolverine in this <laughs> world? Because it's coming. That's a big you know? question. They 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 can do it now. The question is. When do they do it, and how do like do they find someone as good as Hugh Jackman, or like what do you do with that? Yeah, I, I don't know who who's maybe you skirt it entirely, and it's not Wolverine. It's like Weapon X or like the girl or something from Logan. Oh yeah, that's it's somebody with claws though. You know. Yeah, yeah. That the concept of that character anyway. I feel like that's got to be – I feel like that appearance of that character has to be a post credit scene of some movie. Like maybe the next – whatever the next team-up movie is ends with a guy with claws like coming out, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Because maybe it's a character – maybe it's like an actor we, we don't even know and it's just a random guy at the end that they're talking to and all of a sudden he has claws. That would be a crazy thing to go cut to black on. So do you know anything about like is Sony wrapping up their X-Men stuff? And just I think moving so over completely to Marvel. Yes, uh, they Sony. Well, no, I thought Fox had uh, X Men. Maybe you're right. I don't. Maybe I missed. Sony has Spider Man. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sony owns That's all right. Spider Man related stuff. Yeah. So Fox is wrapping up. They have that awful <laughs> Dark Phoenix. Uh, Dark yeah. Phoenix. They also have that weird like New Mutants movie that never came out, and I think it's just being released like not even in theaters now. That like horror one about teens in a mental asylum. Do you remember that? No, that sounds awful. But all right, I saw a trailer for it like two years ago, and it never came out. And I think it's just been getting a ton of reshoots, and people don't know what to do with it. But as far as I know, those are the last two X Men movies. Uh, period until Marvel decides to do something with them because now everything is reverted over. So, I mean, if they do go ahead, like maybe they wait until Fox is done and then they start doing some X-Men stuff. If they do, do they recast all the characters or do they like bring back James McAvoy and those guys? I feel like they want their own stuff. Yeah. They, yeah. Cause they didn't do that with Spider-Man either. So yeah, this is going to be completely new. I, I don't know if they're going to be young or old is another thing. Like, are we going to get a Professor X that is already in the wheelchair? Or are we going to get another origin story of being in the wheelchair? You know, they like their origin stories, but I don't know. I will say that first X-Men movie holds up really well. Yeah, the I think the first two X-Men movies hold up. I've, I haven't seen them in years, but I feel like those two are, are pretty solid movies. It was when they got to the third one where everything fell apart. Yeah. Um, and then there was like, I think X-Men First Class was pretty good as well, but... Yeah, I enjoyed that. It started falling but apart for me pretty quickly after that as well, so... I liked uh, Days of Future Past just because I like time travel stuff, and I like uh, Wolverine going back in time. Oh, I, but... I'm gl- sorry, I'm glancing through my notes, and one thing I wanted to mention that I hate, uh, this is going all the way back to Endgame, 
is nanotech. I don't know how you feel about this. Maybe this only bothers me, but I didn't like it in Infinity War when Iron Man just had a drawn on suit like he didn't have <laughs> like his suit was cool when it was like literally a a piece of armor that he like stepped into or like it would put on him and then now it's just like a cartoon that just sort of um they animate to go around him and so later when he like has the helmet just by itself and he's like you know recording himself like how did he even get that because the thing just sort of (laughs) appears and disappears as if from nowhere um and it's not just him like the other characters have these helmets that just sort of like you know i are they controlling that is it like where is it coming from (laughs) it's all nanotech i mean those time suits are all nanotech they just sort of like the helmets kind of come and go whenever and um and infinity war when iron man is fighting thanos uh, he's just like it's it it becomes a cartoon where he's just like pulling random things out from behind his back and i i have to say i'm sort of into that like i was very much anticipating every time an iron man suit would pop on a screen because they do insane stuff with them now like his hands will morph into like one hand and become a big laser and like 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 shields will flip out of his back and like there was that scene where he had he his back like opened up and he had Thor shoot into his back to propel his I don't know. I like cuz they can do such creative things with his suit. I mean, it at one at some point it gets so wild and unbelievable though that it just like it stopped working for me and I kind of didn't like it anymore. I well, I think they had the liberty to go as powerful as they could because he was about to not exist anymore. So they were just like, how awesome can we make Tony Stark? And it doesn't matter if he becomes too powerful because he's not going to be in the universe anymore. Like, I'm fine with that. But, like, again, his suit was never cooler than it was when it was just, like, the first Iron Man movies and, like, Mm -hmm. the first Avengers movie where it was, like, a literal suit. And, like, he just had the face plate that, like, swung up and you could see his face still in the Mm -hmm. suit. Now it just kind of, like they draw it on him with computers and it just like, it doesn't look like anything. He looks like super CGI now, whereas before he looked like an actual physical thing. I love that he can like make his hands into swords though and stuff. I don't know. Like I did, I just, I don't love it. Maybe it's just me. (laughs) I feel like more people are with you on it, but I just, I don't know. I did not like the nanotech stuff. It seemed too out there and (laughs) unrealistic. (laughs) Like I get that we're talking about comic books, like characters and situations based on comic books. So it's like anything's fair game, but I hate helmets that appear and disappear as if from nowhere. (laughs) Maybe that's like my one pet peeve that I have to deal with, but other standout moments or things you disliked. I also disliked the girl power moment where all the female Avengers just like randomly, uh, you know, they were already fighting. Uh, it was, like it felt like pandering. I don't know. <laughs> well, they were already fighting. Did they like organize this? Did they all communicate to get together? That was one of the like when people talk about fan service as like a negative thing. That's a good example of it where they're like trying (laughs) too hard with something because the other part of it is that Captain Marvel was the one that was holding the gauntlet and she doesn't need help from anyone. So I don't know. That moment just stuck out like a sore thumb like they were just trying to make a point of some sort that was completely unnecessary. sticking out like a finger, uh, did you like when uh, Doctor Strange held up that one finger? I thought that was a very powerful scene. Oh, yeah. Like this is the one chance or the one yeah i like that it was kind of unspoken between them like and uh tony like knew exactly what that meant he had to do yeah that was a good moment also i liked that like ant-man has always been a character that i was like what is he gonna do in all of this and then (laughs) the fact that he was just giant ant-man and you see him punch the the big (laughs) flying thing yeah, that was awesome. I was like, okay, now I get this character and I'm totally on board. <laughs> I like this makes me excited for an Ant-Man. I well, you know, no one really talks about Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I thought those two were great movies, great little adventures. Yeah, they with, they like, were low fun stakes. like low stakes movies that were kind of a nice 
change of pace from some of the bigger movies that surrounded those movies. Yeah. So, yeah, I also liked those. I also, like, seeing Pepper flying around in her own Iron Man suit made me really that wish that there was a fourth solo Iron Man where he and Pepper, like, were sort of a buddy cop situation where they both had Iron Man suits. That would, that would be have awesome. been really cool, but... uh another movie that should have happened in between that we didn't get. Do you think that uh, this would need, this would require a significant time jump, but do you think that Tony Stark's daughter is going to be the new like Iron Man or my Iron Woman kind of thing? Ooh, do you think it'll be Iron Woman with the name of the movie? Is that a comic book series? I don't know. I, I mean, I I'm guess sure, they, but that would they be could eventually get to the point where they start forging their own path and start doing their own thing. With heroes, mm-hmm. that's a possibility. I don't know. That would be great. I don't. I and, don't know if the oh, time man, if jump is too much, older. though. Yeah, I was gonna say she might be too young, and I don't know if they want to do another time jump that really affects the entire cinematic universe. So yeah, she she needs to age considerably to start. I mean, they, unless they she's could some do sort the, of child, prodigy. they could do the Hawkeye thing where they his daughter is now Hawkeye. They could do that. Yeah, I think that'll definitely happen too. So good though, overall, a plus from me. Yeah. Same here. I liked it a lot. I think it was very impressive that they were able to bring it all together and that it worked as well as it did. I loved that each of the original six members of the Avengers really got their own moment in this and that they got such a good send off. Except it sucks that Black Widow died, I guess. And I kind of do wish that they come back. I do wish that they brought her back. Because Scarlett Johansson is also really cool, so it would be cool to yeah. just have more of that character. I still want the solo Black Widow movie, which I guess is happening, but it's a prequel, so it's going to feel a little bit like, I don't know. Is it a prequel? I guess that's a good point. It's possible. They haven't really talked about the plot to it, have they? I don't know. Uh, Not that I'm aware of. I thought they did say it was a prequel, but maybe it's not. Maybe you're right. It probably is an origin story. I feel like, story we, just like we need that, though, because that like I feel like that's a cool story, and I want to know what happens. I agree with that. So, looking forward, what are you most excited about in the MCU? Hmm. I have to say, I'm kind of not excited about the Disney Plus shows. Really? Yeah, because I don't know. Like, maybe they'll be really cool. Even the... Uh, Birdman and Bucky one, I think that has the potential to be pretty cool. Yeah, I guess that could be like a fun buddy cop Falcon. situation. Falcon. His name's Falcon. Ah, that's a bird. It only took us like an hour to figure out that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep calling him Birdman though, so. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. They had like a funny buddy cop dynamic in, what was it, Civil War? So to see them together and sort of really engage with that would be fun. Especially because that's going to be like him coming into his own as Captain America. Although, you know? can he really be? Ca- he doesn't have the super soldiers serum. Yeah, that's a He's good point. He's just like a normal dude that happens to have like a jetpack with wings. Well, is he going to keep having that jetpack? I feel like now that he's got the shield, I, I feel like it's a hat on a hat to have wings. I too. think he will, though. I, isn't that the way it is in the comics? I don't. I have not read these. I've just looked I've them up yeah, briefly, I so I don't know what I'm talking about here. But I. I think he does still have the wings and the the shield. But I, you're right. It is sort of a hat on a hat, especially since, like, while he's flying around, he uses two guns. Yeah. So, like... And he's got those drones, And too. he has the drones. Like, he doesn't have enough arms to hold all the props that he has now. So, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything else to, to add to this? Um, It was a great conclusion. Um... No, I don't think so. I think we've said it all. I'm trying to think of other like little moments that I liked. A lot of them involved Paul Rudd, uh, like his explanation or him like being upset that uh, Back to the Future was not the end all be all for time travel. <laughs> um, oh, was it weird? Speaking of when they were mentioning pop culture references, was it weird to you that they mention like they called Thor the Big Lebowski and that starred Jeff Bridges and Jeff Bridges was the bad guy in the first Iron Man movie? And then I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Hot Tub Time Machine was referenced, and Sebastian Stan is the villain in Hot Tub Time Machine. There's a villain in Hot Tub Time Machine. I think so. He's like the bad guy. I don't know. I saw that movie a long time ago, and I I've I never seen have it. Have only the vaguest recollection of it. It's. I mean, at some point, 
It's kind of like uh, how they say every British actor has at some point been in Doctor Who. <laughs> at some point, every actor will be in the MCU, you know? And they pretty much already have. So it's uh, like you kind of can't reference pop culture stuff without accidentally hitting a character that or a, an actor that's been in your MCU. So I guess that's a thing, but... I don't know. It like it didn't bother me. I just seemed interesting. Some people will think way <laughs> too hard about that and be like, "Wait a minute. Does Bucky like has he seen Hot Tub Time Machine and saw someone that looked a lot like himself? Like is that like <laughs> is Sebastian Stan a person who exists in the MCU?" Well, also, we've run into like uh what 22 different iterations of someone who looks like Stan Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wasn't he supposed to be the same person the whole time? Oh, really? I heard that somebody, like, I think you can piece them all together and it's like one consistent character that's been oh. there throughout the entire thing. I think that's what they meant it to be, but maybe I'm wrong. Interesting. Maybe I'm just trying to piece it together because I think it would well, be cool. Well, we have cool. to go back and watch all 22 films. I mean, he's had multiple jobs, if that's the case, throughout the entire thing. Because he, like, always shows up as, like, a postman or, like, some he's rich Hugh guy. He's in one of yeah, the he, yeah. Iron Man movies. Yeah, it may not hold up if you try to go analyze it. Maybe I'm just trying to fictionalize that because I thought it would be fun. But anyway, I don't know. I don't have anything else that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure I'll think of something as soon as we stop recording. But Yeah, maybe we'll talk about it a little bit in next week's episode as well. Yeah. So, no video game news this week, just talking in-game. Um, if you've seen the movie and you liked it or disliked it, go ahead and... How could you dislike Go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know about it. And uh, leave us a like. Give us a, a rating on iTunes. And uh, follow us on Twitter at Starside Cafe. Send us an email at starsidecafe at gmail.com. Visit our website, starsidecafe.com. Did I say that one already? I've, I've already mm-hmm. lost track. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we're on Instagram as well, so you can look us up on there. And, uh, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.